making the most of each moment of time is really important in life. You see, we have moments of time to help people, like I received some help this morning from a wonderful Good Samaritan network that really understood my needs in that moment and immediately responded to what I was needing. And that's how people help. The other day, I had a practical gift from a pastor who lovingly put me up in a hotel room for one evening so that I could practically have a bed and a good night's sleep and a bath. And that's pretty important when you're out and about. Another aspect of loving on people is really listening to their challenges and not adding to them. The crazy thing about homelessness is that I've found is that if I fall asleep naturally because I'm literally tired from walking from here and there and everywhere, from one town to the next, going through pastures and other places that the Lord leads me in order to get to the different places I need to go and meet the people I need to see, that openly people somehow decide that they have the right to illegally, immorally, and illicitly get into my baggage. I've lost things off my person for sure in those moments of time. I had a knife, spoon, and fork set from a family member who gifted it to me because the other set that I had an impound went missing. Now I'm missing a fork and a knife from that set. When I look in my property in my inventory of my storage unit, I find that some important things are missing. Some pouches that I knitted in order to produce some leather wear for my life and other things go missing. It's very distracting. You see, in my situation, I practically organized the entire storage unit, and yet what I found was that a few weeks later, it was totally disorganized. Tables were thrown up in ways that a man of my size could never do it alone. And frankly, I find it offensive that someone thinks that they have the right to keep stockpiling my property, putting it in some of my bags, as if they're going to walk in and walk out with something they prepared in theft. I find that highly illegal, extremely immoral, and of course, completely illicit in thinking. It's truly an illness of the mind for someone to believe that because a person is renting a unit that they have some illegal right to walk into a person's property and take things. I've seen a lot of things that are out of place in what I packed away in my life and in my trunks and in my boxes, completely inappropriately packed with other things. I've seen a lot of vandalism. I've seen a lot of damage to my property. And openly, I'm not sure if I still have all my property because someone keeps looking at my storage unit, which I'm literally getting paid for by a loving mother who's supposed to be doing that out of a kindness to make sure I don't lose my life reserves, but openly she's doing it because I'm homeless and I've not produced an income in a while. Because when I try to go to produce an income, someone interferes with that. Some pastor thinks that he's got it all covered, but that's not always true. Some individual says, oh, we can handle that, and they don't really have that ability to do it. I can see it in their brochures. I can see it in their website. I can literally experience it when I visit their church. And a lot of times I get to a church and I'm literally swarmed by people because of A, how I look, or B, how I possibly smell, which is sort of sad because I do my best to stay clean and keep my clothes as laundered as possible. But in life, when you're homeless, you don't always have the funds to take a shower in a positive place. It's not true that people don't usually open up their homes to people they don't know all that well. Even colleagues I know really well who know that I'm a safe individual don't even bother to produce any sort of assistance whatsoever in my life, and that's on them before their God in heaven, not on me. I can put it out there what I'm looking for, that I'm looking for a podcasting job or interviewing people in a journalistic-oriented way. I can also put out that I'm interested in political consulting because I have started to see the women that I've actually written to personally via email or been tweeting at or direct messaging to starting to implement some of the things I've suggested. Now, maybe it's their social media directors finally getting the program that they're missing out on plenty of votes because they're not thinking in terms of the mass market. They're thinking in terms of niches and issues, which is not what people buy in the political market of a person. They're not buying programs. They're not buying the policies. They're literally buying into a person and their soul. And that's important for them to get. Now, when I talk like this, I'm talking relatively soft for men because I'm in a public place and I want to be thoughtful and respectful of other people's time and their treasure of having the ability to work free of lots of chaos in their life. But in life, we have moments of time to help someone and I'm looking for opportunities that allow me to trade my services for simply a bed and some food. Now today I was able to pick up some food and I lovingly received a bag, but we'll see how long that bag lasts because the people who've been stalking my life literally cut my bags. They take things out of my pockets, they piss around in my storage unit, and they literally think it's a fun and game time. I did not invite anyone to play a game on my life. I didn't invite anyone to get into my records. I didn't invite anyone to steal them. 
And those many things that have gone stolen from my storage unit, yet when I complain about it, they say, oh, it couldn't possibly be us. Really? Well, who else could it be? The family could have only gotten in if they illegally stole a key off me when I was sleeping. And other than that, it could only be officers of the law who have the ability and the wherewithal to open any lock in a matter of seconds. We all know this is true. The absolute truth is that the locks on our homes and the locks on our luggage and the locks on anything that we put a lock on are pretty much infallible. Not true at all. They can be opened within a simple $20 tool is what I'm learning. And frankly, most of the locks that are stole, sold, sold at a particular shop or have the same number on them which means someone could follow you to see what you're buying, see that you're buying a lock, follow you home, and then basically pick up a lock just like it in the bin behind it and literally open your door. There are a lot of people who lie about their rights in people's homes and in their property. I have found that I had a particular unique shirt with me as of two days ago, but it's no longer in my baggage. I've also seen that my Dalai Lama tarot cards have or oracle cards of happy messages and peaceful sayings have gone literally missing from my property. And there's only two possibilities in that case. One, when I fell asleep in a public space near the escape room in Fishers, and I simply was downstairs and just naturally fell asleep in the warmth of that room, waiting for someone to pick me up. But at the same time, it could have also happened when I went to a lovely lunch at a pastoral-type home situation, or when I left my bag somewhat unattended to take a tour of a church because I couldn't lug it up and down the stairs where they had no handicapped accessible capabilities. You see, in life, we have moments of time to prove who we are, and we don't get into people's personal belongings just to be because we're curious about them or because we like to do things. I find it offensive that someone would think they had the right to do it, and frankly, nobody gets into your mom's purse without permission, so why the hell would you get into a man's pants pockets, his luggage, or anything else that he particularly owns and has the right to because it was his hard-earned discretionary dollars that took it upon himself to find it, to procure it, to be led to it by the Lord. In life, we have got moments of time to make all the difference in the world for people, and now it's time to close this audio cast saying, in life, we have to look at the immoral behavior of the illegals who are here and take care of them through education, training, but doing it right in the first place. I put together a little slide that talks about how we might educate our children in a way that they are raised to understand the laws of the land so that they regard other people's rights as important as their own. This has been Blaze Communications talking openly about politics, openly about homelessness, and openly about a lot of topics of interest to people in my community who are concerned with how do I stay safe, how do I stay employed, and how do I get more in life because we all need to make a life worth living and a retirement worth having.